bookworms. Today I'm here with Cassie. No one can see me. Wait, well, now you can. Hi. <laughs> um, you might notice that it's not, in fact, July anymore. Or three o'clock. <laughs> yeah, that too. Uh, but we are having our July book club for Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zapia. Um, we both were really busy for a couple of months, so that's why we haven't had it yet. But we also have kind of been working on like revamping book club because we know that we have like really long episodes. And I know some of you like that, but I know other people like shorter videos. So I think that we're going to try to keep them a little bit on the shorter side from now on. Um, and we're also going to have more of like a natural discussion as opposed to like these are specific questions about everything going on in the book. Um, so let us know if you have any other feedback, like anything that you would like to see in book club that you don't currently see now, um, or anything like that. Do you have anything to add? I think that's everything. No, I think that was really good. Um, but you know, feel free to keep sending us questions either through Twitter using our hashtag Spines with Wines, or apparently there's some secret, can, are you sure you can't hear that cat? <laughs> no, I can. I couldn't before. <laughs> but it's fine. It's being very destructive. Um, or uh, through the chat bar. Will you stop? <laughs> um, Keep going. I'm going to just deal with this real quick. <laughs> okay. So also, actually, um, because it's been so long since our last book club, what we also decided to do is that we're not going to do a book for December, so I'm letting you know that right now. Um, but we are thinking of having like just a kind of fun little end of the year show where we just like reflect and talk about some of our favorite books that we read over the year, some of our favorite book club books, some of our least favorite book club books, um, and just like a little bit about going into 2018. And then we're actually going to start 2018 off with like a huge bang. And we're going to be really ambitious and try to do two book clubs because there are two books coming out in January that both of us, well, I already read both of them and I love both of them. And Cassie already read one of them and she loves that one. So <laughs> I'm not going to reveal them now. We'll tell you that in the December show, but yeah, so as always, we'll start here telling you, I'll go first since why not? <laughs> as you know, I'm Kristen, and today I am drinking a glass of glue wine, which is like a German mold wine. Um, I was lucky enough yesterday to learn the secret family recipe from my grandfather, so we made a giant batch of it, and I just heated some up for myself. I'm having that. And I'm currently reading Leviathan Wakes by James S.A. Corey. It's enormous <laughs> but I'm halfway through it and it's really good and yeah I wish I was drinking glue wine wait it's delicious glue. yeah yeah Kristen had me try some and at a restaurant it was amazing yeah. actually it was funny my family was like oh it's the first glue wine of the season and I was like I, I had some on October 1st with Cassie so <laughs> <laughs> you're celebrating Christmas real early yeah um so I found this beautiful, perfectly blue teal bottle that just like matched the books. So great that I had to get it. It's called Relax. It's a Pinot Grigio. And it's actually really good because it has like peaches and pears and that cat, uh, citrus <laughs> and all kinds of fun stuff in it. Um, and I am currently, re geez, can you, ruining everything. <laughs> I'm actually reading a nonfiction book. It's called The Disaster Artist because I really want to see the movie. And I just rewatched The Room, and that was just a mess as it always is. And it's kind of fun reading about the behind the scenes of how this disaster came to be. So I'm also really enjoying mine, which is nowhere near as long as yours. <laughs> well, mine is huge. Actually, one of the authors of this, um, James S.A. Corey, is actually two authors. Oh. One of them is. Where is it? I don't want to see the wrong one. Okay, so it's Daniel Abraham and Ty Frank, and Ty Frank is George R. R. Martin's assistant. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure the other one actually studied or like apprenticed under Brandon Sanderson, so they're they're they've got like good names behind them. I was saying that's why it's a thousand pages long. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's except they just published the seventh book of this on Tuesday. Holy crap going to be nine of them and I'm like pretty confident that they're gonna publish all of them and not be like George R. R. Martin. Still waiting. Yeah. Still waiting. <laughs> but anyway, Lies and Her Monsters. Do you want to give a little synopsis of what the book's about? Uh sure, as I'm deeply bleeding <laughs> from oh, Catatech. Uh 
So, as Kristen said, we read this way back in July. Um, but basically, it's about this girl named Eliza. She's, like, desperately shy, and she really loves art. But deep down, she has this secret online persona called Lady Constellation, and she writes this kind of huge fandom, like, worldwide phenomenon webcomic, basically, and no one knows her secret except her parents. And she pretty much plans to keep it that way until this kind of prolific fan fiction author who writes monster sea fan fiction kind of happens to move to her town and shenanigans ensue. <laughs> that is for sure. Yeah. I mean, just judging from the synopsis, it's pretty obvious that at some point everything is going to come crashing down <laughs> and her identity is going to be revealed and all of that stuff. So that definitely does happen. But what did you think about the like the buildup before her identity was revealed versus everything that happened after? Based on the synopsis alone, I kind of was expecting to happen it to happen like at least, I don't know, halfway through the book, but I feel like it happened, I don't know, the last like 40 pages or so. So I was kind of just waiting for this fallout and waiting for this fallout and it just, it didn't happen until way later. So I kind of didn't know how to take that. I kind of wish it had happened. <laughs> Previously, it just kind of kept getting pushed off. Um, I was just so stressed waiting for that reveal. <laughs> Me too. Every time that, like, the whole time that I was reading in the beginning, I kept being like, okay, but it's going to happen soon, and then everything's going to be horrible, because everything was going so well, and I was just like, well, this can't last. Yeah. It kind of reminded me in, like, a rom-com or a comedy where like the bad thing always happens in the movie and you're like really sad, but you're like, but it's gonna be okay. It was kind of like that, cause that's always structured towards the end. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that, that had anything to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> but like as a book reader, I thought for sure we would have been dealing with this way longer and that kind of bummed me out, we didn't. Yeah, me too. But I like, I really liked Francesca's writing. Um, I thought like, I thought that the whole story was really engaging and I never like wanted to put it down. And also I feel like I read it really quickly because it was like a very just engrossing and like easy read, which was nice. Um, and also, I, I mean, I think that everything went really well. I like, I'm sorry. Your cat. I don't want to pull her off. She's on her cat house and I like don't want to pull her off because like you're not supposed to do that. It's like their safe space, but she's also just jump running up and down, like going crazy. You have a very crazy cat. <laughs> um but like I was saying I just like so I there was pretty much there was only one thing about the book that really bothered me and if it hadn't been for that one thing I would have loved it like way more mm -hmm. um and I was sad that it happened I guess I may as well just go into it yeah now. go spoil us spoil us <laughs> yeah <laughs> so I thought everything was so perfect I loved Wallace and everything and then as soon as he found out that Eliza was actually Lady Constellation he like did a complete 180 with his attitude and I just felt like the way that he treated her was horrible and I get that he felt like he was betrayed or whatever but like that was not the right way to act and that really bothered me. Yeah I can see that. Um, I kind of expected her reveal to be when he like kind of admitted through email like that really heartbreaking emotional thing about his father and I was like oh this is like the perfect time right? He died. Yeah. He died. Uh, he killed himself. Yeah. Um, so this would have been like the perfect time for her to be like, oh, you bared yourself emotionally for me. Here's my secret. Even though, you know, I should have told you a billion years before, you know, we start dating and stuff. Yeah. But I can totally under understand how he would be like completely betrayed to the fact where she like kind of made up like an alter ego for her. So, like she came up with a fake, a different fake online account to kind of like convince her convince him she wasn't Lady Constellation, which is just insane. Yeah, that was kind of weird. That's like, I don't know, like you have an identity online and then you're like, I'm creating a fan identity for myself. Right. But he like totally laid himself bare and it wasn't in person. He did it through email. So she could have very well, you know, responded in kind through email. Yeah. Um, also, I thought that like while her parents really drove me crazy, <laughs> their actions I thought that that was a really realistic portrayal of how a lot of parents are because they didn't grow up with the internet like we have mm -hmm. and they don't understand like that you can make money from doing things online and like that is a real job just because you're not like sitting in an office um and they like 
had no clue how huge Monster C is. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, could you imagine explaining that to like her grandparents like at Thanksgiving? Like, oh, what do you do, honey? I have a webcomic. They'd probably be like, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually like have a cousin who has a webcomic called Awkward Zombie, and she does make money, like a lot of money off of it. So oh. I don't know. Like, if she, her grandma seems to understand, but you know, not all grandparents are technically savvy or parents. <laughs> yeah. Um, I also, um, what's he gonna say? I'm losing my train of thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the fandom aspect. I really, really liked how um, Eliza felt, like, so connected to these characters. And also just that, like, dumb, like, werewolf show that she watched. <laughs> and they all, they all like, talked about it together. That was cute. Yeah, I thought that was adorable. Because that really is, like, what fandom is all about. It's all about, like, community and um, just, like, enjoying things together. It kind of reminded me, honestly, of, like, Pretty Little Liars. Because I, like, Cassie and I both watched that show through uh, yes yes true <laughs> and neither of us enjoyed it for the past like what three seasons or something if not more <laughs> yeah like they were they were horrible but every week we looked forward to watching them so that we could talk about it together and just be like this is the worst why are we doing this <laughs> yeah uh, so that i thought that was really cute yeah um i really liked all the phantom stuff um i kind of wrote fan fiction in high school because i was like sad and lonely so, like, Aww. that kind of gave me, like, aw. Where can we find it? No, I'm not telling you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have, like, funny, like, I think it's still up, like, funny old fan fiction, like, in script format that was illegal to fanfiction.net, like, up under your commander. Yeah. So, you can find that. Um, um, was it Harry Potter fan fiction? It was, like, I did, a, like, script parodies and stuff. And then I had... Um, my really big opus that I never finished was based on all the Lord of the Rings books and it was a musical for some reason and they were all trying to stop the upcoming Lord of the Rings musical that they were planning that never happened. That's awesome. There was like a lot of music. It was called um, Guys in Ball Rugs. <laughs> you should sell your script to Amazon for their own. Yeah. Um, I also had very briefly a legless Jesus fan fiction that I wrote on a dare. <laughs> okay. It's called something holy. <laughs> that sounds very interesting. <laughs> so that's, you know, <laughs> I really related to all that. Um, I don't know if I believe that football players, like, knew. Like, was it that big that, like, football players at some point were like, oh, that's that C thing everyone's always talking about. Yeah. It like, definitely made it seem, like, way more, like, way bigger than it was because right. it's not even, it's not something that was, like, published in a book or something where there's, like, a giant cult following. So to have something that was just online was definitely different and like you said I was also surprised that the football players knew about it yeah like unless they have like some I don't know maybe they have a sister who's like obsessed with it but the fact that like her teacher like had a tattoo mm -hmm. <laughs> to me was like wait what <laughs> what is <laughs> how big is this that must be so weird. Mm -hmm. could you I cannot imagine that that I mean that must be how like people that are celebrities feel when they see like their face tattooed on other people like that's so weird yeah for them i Which mean if that's like, what you want to get more power to you yeah but yeah but to have it be your teacher is just so strange and for her to like tell you like oh look at my secret no yeah. <laughs> take that to your grave teacher lady <laughs> I also really loved um, Eliza's group of friends that she made like through Monster C because I think it's so realistic that when you're online, you're meeting people like from all over and you're not necessarily only confined to meeting people who are exactly the same age as you and exactly the same class and everything. And like one of her best friends was like an older man and then another one was like a young girl that was still in school and they like made fun of her for being so young. And I just thought that was like really accurate because in life, like while you are younger, usually you are conf like have those confines, but as you get older, like you tend to, your best friends tend to be usually different from you. Mm -hmm. And it was so cute. They just like talked to each other every day and like kind of got them, you know, they were sending each other gifts and stuff and her mom didn't get it at all. She was mm -hmm. like, these people are, you know, yes. serial killers and child predators. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's like, no, they're nice. <laughs> yeah, no. A lot of times, I mean, a lot of times, too, like, when I was younger, when I was making some of my, like, current best friends, you included, 
Um, but <laughs> yeah, I would be like, oh, I'm going to go into the city and like go to brunch with this person. And my mom would be like, how do you know them? And I'd be like, the internet. And she'd be like, be careful. We're, well, first of all, we're going to a public place. Yeah. <laughs> so done. <laughs> I know, and I'd be like, I've hung out with them a lot of times, like, it's fine. <laughs> and they're like, you just don't know. Which were in my not. wedding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, I did go to your wedding, and you gave time. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, we did meet a couple of bad people, so that they, you do have to be careful. I mean, it does happen. But, <laughs> but for the most part, it's been good. Yeah, meet in a public place, tell people where you're going, just in case you never come back. Mm -hmm. Pretty standard stuff. Oh, I loved the um, the bookstore parties, too. Oh, they were cute. And they were, oh, like, in costume. So and, like, the mom and her kid. And, oh. Mm -hmm. They were so cute. That was yeah. adorable. That reminded me of, like, midnight parties for Harry Potter book releases when I was younger. Yeah, those were... They don't do that for anything anymore, I feel like. Like, what else is big enough? They did it for Cursed Child. Yeah, but other than Harry Potter. <laughs> Yeah, like I don't a midnight know. screening. I wonder if they do it for any Rick Riordan books. Mm. I feel like he would be big enough for it. I'm just not his market, I think. But I could see him doing it for that. Okay. I was gonna. Th I was trying to think. There's not really any like a, like even a Stephen King probably wouldn't, or like an Anne Rice probably wouldn't create like a midnight release party. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't think. I can't see, like, well, actually, you never know. I was going to say I can't really see, like, those fans lining up for it like that because I feel like, well, I guess Stephen King probably has more of a following now, um, like, fandom-wise, but he has, like, an older fandom, and I feel like those fans were, like, like pre-internet times and pre-all yeah. like, of this stuff happening. I don't know. The Anne Rice fandom's pretty great. I don't know about now because all her books are apparently terrible, but... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if people are lining up to find out how Lestat goes to Atlantis. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> that would be really weird. <laughs> I'm really excited to hate read that one day. One day. One day. <laughs> um, I, oh, I also really liked how supportive Eliza's siblings were. Oh, my God. They were so cute towards the end when they were, like, like talking to her parents about how important she is because they get it. And they're just like, oh, they were so cute, those little brothers with the terrible names. I wrote them down. They were so bad. <laughs> I don't remember what they were. Uh, da, 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 da. It was like a million months ago. <laughs> I have a note from August 7th about them. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is when we were talking about doing questions. Um, Sullivan and Churchill. Oh, right. Were their names. They... I think they had, like, dumb nicknames, too, like Sally and Church or something terrible or Hill or... Yeah. Um, how did you feel about the way that they portrayed Eliza's anxiety, like, after all of the fallout? I mean, I found it really interesting. Um, I don't know if it works as good. I just read Turtles all the way down, so I don't know if... I did too. Right. I don't know if, because I just recently read that. Uh, I also don't think it helped that it was like so protracted. Like she found out and it was like, I don't know, what, like 40 pages of depression after she her identity was revealed. So I, I think if I had had more time with it, maybe, because it really, like it was there, like her shyness and her sadness, but it kind of really didn't come out like full force until everyone found out who she was. Yeah. So I think I needed a little more time with that. But I mean, I was definitely getting all those I have a sad teenager hormone feels that I definitely dealt with <laughs> going yeah. through school. <laughs> I actually really liked it. Um, I thought it seemed like really believable and just like the pressure that somebody that creates things online can feel. I felt like that was, was like a kind of relatable. Um, not that I have like a ton of pressure, but like there will constantly be comments that are like, do a bookshelf tour, or, like do this. And people just like expect you to do things. And it's like, I'm doing this for fun. This Dance monkey. <laughs> yeah. So I, I thought that was really relatable. And then also her anxiety, I thought was really relatable too. like how it took her like a lot to kind of 
muster up the call the courage to like go out to the bookstore that night and go to that party like because she's just such like a homebody and I never had to leave my house I wouldn't <laughs> so I totally like totally got that feeling I was like yes <laughs> <laughs> like I also want to just stay home yeah <laughs> With a good book or in her case a tablet <laughs> yes <laughs> she had a good excuse though she had you know really Cat's now sitting in the only loud thing in the room, which is a garbage bag. That's, she just picks the right places. Well, it's a spare tire that Kenny threw in here, like just to get out of the way, but she's now sitting in it. So <laughs> fun. It's a good place to be. I feel like I should show you because it's really funny. <laughs> she's staring what at you, you too. What are you doing? You mean silly? <laughs> sorry about that interlude i had to i had to share her that's okay um okay so is there anything else that you want to say or do you want to like talk about overall feelings and tell our star readings oh my gosh it's just very hard because we i read this book back in august and i remember feeling very bad that it took me till august to read it but now i don't feel so bad because here we are in december Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just reading. Reading I was waiting for it to come off of hold at my library for like the longest time. Yeah, it's really Kristen's library's. It's Kristen's my library's fault. It is. I like Cassie would text me every day and be like, "Did you get it yet?" <laughs> text her a screenshot. Like I'm number two now. <laughs> mm, I feel like we covered on a lot of like my notes. Yeah. But yeah, uh, I really liked it, despite you know. A few things. Um, I found it like super nostalgic, and it kind of uh, brought me back to like high oh, school. Me. What? Sorry, I totally interrupted you. But what did you think about like the comic pages being in the book? Oh, so I'm really a fan of like experimental kind of like you know like the House of Leaves type, or you know like a uh, pistolary novels. I believe it's called. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I really loved the artwork that much. Um, to be honest, I kind of wanted more. And also, I was kind of disappointed. This brings me to another point I'm just thinking of. I was kind of disappointed because there's like a Blogspot link. And of course, I immediately went to that Blogspot link to see if it was real. And it was like, oh, I see you're reading Eliza and her monsters. There's actually nothing here. But it turns out the author is, there's a book within the book that like she's obsessed with. And she kind of like contacts the author to deal with what do you do when, you know, your art isn't, you know, whatever. It's like a kind of Fault in Our Stars type thing to bring John Green back into it, where she contacts, like, her favorite author of the book, but she's actually writing that book, like, online, which is kind of interesting. But I wish she had a monstrous sea, like, I don't know, story or something that I could have found when I went there. Yeah, I think that would have been good, too, because, like, the, the pieces that we got weren't necessarily, like, cohesive throughout, so it wasn't, like... I don't think if you, like, just read those, you would be getting no. a copy of, like... And I don't think they were... Were they supposed to be finished? Like, they weren't... I don't think so. I mean, she didn't... She hadn't finished the comic. It was just, like... I think those were just, like, pieces that she was uploading week per week just to give us insight. And I feel like they kind of tried to make some of them, like, reflective of what was going on um, mm -hmm. in Eliza's life at the time. But just looking at those, I was like, this is the, you know, worldwide phenomenon. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if that kind of ruined that for me. <laughs> but yeah. they're like, maybe just not have them. I don't know. It definitely would have been cool if there was like more to that. Yeah, like a full color or something. It was like a lot of like a sketch and then some text. So that was kind of, that kind of threw me off. I did appreciate it though. It was interesting. Me too. I also am a fan of when books try to like tell a story a little bit differently. Um, like, what was it called? It's everything, everything. I thought that was really fun with like the illustrations in it. And um, I haven't read it yet, but everyone says night film is really good. And that. Oh yeah. I heard that's actually even better. Like on a, like a Kindle or something. Cause it's so oh, different. Yeah. Cause yeah. It, yeah. And I think that you can like click on things that link to stuff or I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, so I liked it. Like I liked that they had those added tidbits so that you could see a little bit of her fandom. Um, yeah. But, but also, like, I didn't feel very connected to Monstrous Sea. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of hard when you're like, this is the greatest thing ever, and the internet loves it, and everyone's obsessed with it. Like, that's a lot to live up to. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, yeah, I think that's all that I have to say about it. Yeah, again, it's hard because we read this so long ago, four months ago. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I feel like we, like, as we started talking about it, I feel like everything kind of came back to me. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I overall, like, I really enjoyed it. Like I said in the beginning, if it hadn't been for the way that Wallace started acting after he found out, I would have given it five stars. Or if he had, or if he had like acted how he had, but Eliza hadn't forgiven him, then I also would have given it five stars. But Ooh, I like that. <laughs> yeah, like I kind of was like, he like was really horrible to you and you shouldn't forgive him. Like I couldn't get past it. And I, I felt like I really liked her at that point. So I couldn't get past how he treated her. Mm -hmm. um, and like, I'm definitely a sucker for like a happy ending with like the couple getting together. But in their case, I was just like, I feel like he can't come back from what he did. So that lowered my rating to four stars. Okay. I like that. Uh, I also gave it four stars. Um, I think my main gripes were just probably that expectation that they were going to be dealing with this fallout a lot longer. And that really threw me off that we didn't. And then like we just discussed with the imagery, just didn't really fit what we were supposed to get. Mm -hmm. So, but I really, I really enjoyed it. Like I didn't, I read it pretty fast considering how it's like a pretty thick book. Yeah, me yeah. too. I think I read it in like two to three days. Yeah, it went really quick. I don't know why I kept comparing it to the upside of Unrequited, but I, I did for some reason. I think we read that one like right before. Yeah, we read it like kind of close. And also yeah. you don't read that much contemporary. So it, like it needs to be something special, like with illustrations, yeah. <laughs> like this one. Or by an author who's just really good at characters. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. So I think that's it. Um, as you said in the beginning of the video, we are not doing a December book, but we- You said that. I just said, as I said in the beginning of the video. I thought you said, as you said in the beginning of the video. I thought I, that's what I did say. As, I thought you said, I thought you said, as you said. Oh, I like meant- meaning me. If I did, I meant me. But okay. either way, we're not doing a December book, but we are going to do like kind of an end of the year live show. That'll be a more fun thing and that way like, you won't necessarily have to have read a book to watch us. You can join in and tell us about your favorite books too and ask like any end of the year questions that you wanna ask and give us any feedback again on book club. And if you like this new format, let us know. Or you um, don't, if you're like, it's dumb and I hate you. No, you can tell us that too. Feel free to do that too. I mean, you can say it nicely, but <laughs> but definitely tell us. <laughs> um, <laughs> suggestions and um, yeah. Then we'll be we'll be back in January with two books as competent human beings. Yeah, you want a book a month ish. Um, so Cassie, tell them where they can find you. Oh man, uh, everywhere on the internet. I am your chmonger, Y R C H M O N G E R. Uh, I'm mostly on Instagram and Twitter these days. Um, and Goodreads, and you can find my book blog, Bibliomantics, where I do book news and mini book reviews and all the books I spent all my money on, etc. Calls. Calls. Book calls. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Kristen. Obviously, you can find me here on my YouTube channel. Um, you can also find me on Instagram at Super Space Chick or Twitter at Super Space Chick, also on Goodreads, um, and also on my blog, which got redesigned, and I love it. Oh, it's so cute. Thank you. And also, all of my links and all of Cassie's links are already down below in the description, so you don't have to remember what we said. You can just click through. Oh, and join our Goodreads group. Yes. yes. Vines with Wines. <laughs> <laughs> that will now be updated because we're now doing book clubs again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that is all that we have for this video, but we will see you guys much sooner than the last time that we <laughs> did. So, yeah. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>